Mufti, what is, where do Neanderthals and Denisovan fit in the Islamic narrative? <laughs> where do the Neanderthals fit in? <laughs> what uh, what group and denomination is this? What we're trying to figure out? <laughs> no. Neanderthals and Denisovans, and there's, there's arguably another X um, species, which we're not sure who they are yet, but we know that they've contributed to our DNA as well, and so they must have existed. And so, right, where do they fit in? I don't know what that means in the sense that... Um, they obviously weren't around when Islam is around. So <laughs> they fit into the Islamic narrative, if that's what you mean. Or if you mean by the question, what does Islam say about them? Islam doesn't say anything about them. But Islam isn't here to, to speak as Islam isn't an archaeological or an anthropological manual <laughs> or a study guide on how to approach the human genome structure or it isn't a book on physics or it isn't a book on biology or it isn't it's a message to connect people to the divine the quran hints uh towards um other hominins that preceded adam alayhi salam and I've covered this previously. I mean, there's different ways to look at it. So, so the Quran hints towards this, that there were other hominins that preceded Adam alayhi salam. It doesn't clearly state it, but it hints towards it. Now, some people say, well, that hint could have no, like they, they don't, for let's say they don't feel comfortable with that. So they interpret that hint. Oh, you don't need to interpret. It's a hint. So it's not being very clear uh, in, in expressing it because it's not pertinent to the message that Islam, the Quran, did not come to teach, you know, the Arabs, for example, about Neanderthals and Denisovans and, and all this, you know, and other hominins or Heidelbergensis or, you know, Homo erectus or Australopithecus. It didn't come for these things. So... Well, you know, there's no point kind of extrapolating on this. And plus, this, these people wouldn't understand that at the time. The, the, the Arabs of Arabia, there's no point talking to them about, you know, and do you know what happened to Australopithecus? <laughs> it's like, oh, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? So, uh, but it hints. So Allah mentions in the Quran that um, things about Adam being a type of Bashar. So, inni khaliqun uh, basharan, basharan, see, a type of bashar. And some people, mm, you know, they, they're not that convinced that the hint is referring to that. Then there's Allah uh, mentions in the Quran this questioning that there is, you know, almost this. And, 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 the, and one can ask, why is this even mentioned in the Quran? Like, what is the purpose? That... Allah mentions the angels ask this question that that are you creating an insan who will you know uh fil ardi wa dima who will just spread corruption and just all he will do is just do bloodshed they'll just go about like beasts and the question is that what were they basing this knowledge on because Otherwise, it doesn't make because if if there's just a new prototype of something that doesn't look like anything, like it's just it's just new. Like a, if I get a cube here or I get something and I, I say ah, so you're not going to say well, oh my god, have you done that? So there's great mischief and there's great trouble. Like you you probably ask what is it? So for them to question as their first question that oh this is just another this is just something that will once again spread bloodshed on the earth the question is where were they getting they were basing this on something so 
some people have said they were basing this on other forms of creation, i.e. the jinn possibly, which is unseen creation, unseen forces at play. That's one way. Some people said they just based this on creatures. So like, let's say, dinosaurs and other things that have lived and roamed the earth, that these things that have just killed each other and just been beasts of prey, that's what they're basing it on. What seems more apt is that it's actually based on the fact that it resembles other hominins, that this hominin looks like other hominins before it, even if it's slightly different. <laughs> but it resembles them. So what's so special about this hominin? And that kind of seems much more uh, apt. Also another uh, you know, amazing and beautiful way of looking at this verse of the Qur'an, if you think about it, إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ خَلِيفَةً فِي الْأَرْضِ That Allah says, I'm creating, I'm placing now a khalifa. And one of the amazing, you know, and this is the Arabic language, is that w w one of the amazing connotations of what this word means, because there's no point, you see, Khalifa now means like a ruler, but that word of ruler developed after Islam. So pre-Islam, the Arabs never used to use the word Khalifa to mean a king or a ruler. But this came, this is a post-Islamic occurrence. So there's no point reading the Qur'an with post-Islamic language. That's like saying, so for example, when, <clears throat> when the Qur'an was being revealed, there were no ulama, like clergy or scholars. So when you read the word ulama in the Qur'an, you can't think it's, referring to clergy i mean by extension it could, could be so you could say look one of them this is one of the amazing features of the quran that it can by extension be referring to things but by default it couldn't be speaking about the clergy or the scholarly class because there, there were no scholarly class in the time of the prophet sallallahu so when the quran is being revealed so you have to think well how was it when in the prophet's lifetime so in the Prophet's lifetime, Khalifa couldn't have meant king or ruler because the Arabs never used it like that. Now, one thing, what it did mean is something that comes after. Now, you see, or something that comes at the end of, because khalf, the word khalf in Arabic means behind. Something that comes, so this thing comes then behind it or at the end of it, Khalifa comes this thing and it would make sense that in a chain a series of manifestations the final succession to all of that all of these hominins is the ultimate which will result in the cognitive revolution which will result with mankind as we know it i think that's a an amazing beautiful way to read these verses of the quran Right, so let's move on. Mm -hmm. Jacked humans with massive bones. Neanderthals weren't stupid, by the way. They were, I know we use that term to say <laughs> you Neanderthal, but Neanderthals were, you know, they, they were more intelligent than we think. Obviously, they weren't more intelligent than us today as humans but they were more intelligent than humans think they were so humans think of them like chimpanzees or gorillas they weren't like that they were much more intelligent than, than that so they were probably as intelligent as maybe like an eight nine year old child which is pretty intelligent so you know, that's that's quite sophisticated so don't don't think that whereas chimpanzees may be about as intelligent as maybe like a three-year-old child so it's not you know there's quite a substantial difference obviously a eight-year-old child nine-year-old child with a sophisticated mature man or woman let's say who 40 year old 
with the kind of sophistication of the brain that we have is is incredibly complex I mean, we can think in immense abstraction that a child just can't comprehend even you know concepts yet so but they're not stupid either <laughs> you know an eight nine year old isn't dumb by any measure right so um the prehistoric timeline is fascinating neanderthals loved making love with humans but the resulting offspring wiped them out um you know that seems to be i don't buy the uh we kind of out we absorbed them i don't buy that they did obviously interbreed i don't think they excessively interbred i don't think so because uh, you see creatures have a different scent to them and i think they would generally homo sapiens and neanderthals would recognize a kind of difference in scent that would not that would be kind of somewhat off-putting like i don't think they would um like obviously they can see similarities between us and them but they, they don't see they wouldn't be a kind of like a sexual appeal because we we are just totally different humans and and we would have like i'm saying we would have fundamental sense to us that maybe we can't smell because we're humans <laughs> we're hot we're all kind of homo sapiens so we must all have it but they have it so like the way animals have a scent or an odor they they would have had an odor that would i'm sure that homo sapiens would have found somewhat repulsive um i'm not saying it would have been totally like you can't totally stand it at all but i'm pretty sure it would have been somewhat repulsive they wouldn't have found it appealing so hence i think it was the other way i think it was more so neanderthal men with some homo sapien women and i think i don't think it was excessively happening but i think it happened on some occasions of obviously you're going to get some and the homo sapien woman is then still with her tribe and she gives birth to the child so the birth so the child carries on and the child has then neanderthal dna but then that child would carry mate with a normal human and the, so it'll kind of rinse it it'll kind of like clean it out filter it out so hence today we only have <clears throat> one to four percent um this is non-africans africans don't have any usually neanderthal dna but non-africans i think europeans having the most and then mm, other people as well so all non-africans have some neanderthal dna but it's it's a small amount it's probably anything between one percent to about four percent in between there and it actually contributes for also check this out it contributes for the weakness that humans have to for smoking <laughs> so those of you that smoke and you can't seem to give up smoking uh i i'm part of that is as a result of what was inherited by the neanderthal dna part of that i mean i'm sure obviously even if you didn't have it, you could still get affected by smoking. But it, it just, I think it gives a greater propensity um, to being addicted to it. That's all. Right. So what is going on? Homo sapien women under duress. <laughs> well, I'm sure it was all a very long time ago. <laughs> and yeah well not much you can do about it you can just embrace the genes now um mufti going all dr omar okay i don't know doctor i never heard africans don't have neanderthal dna this is not dr omar this is <laughs> anthropology okay and so that's generally how it is it doesn't mean that no person who you may deem today to be African will have that because it could be that who you come across today and is African somewhere in their ancestry had someone that wasn't African. 
So it could be that because people have migrated all the time. So you don't know, like when I did my ancestry DNA, 13% came through as Gaelic, um, which is like, what, like Irish, Welsh and Scottish, like 13% of it. You think, what, what the hell is 13% of it doing all the way in over there? But it's it's like that. So you're going to see that because people move around, so you may have somewhere an ancestor that has contributed a certain DNA. So just because you, you doesn't mean today, but in essence, people who have only had African ancestry, they won't have any uh, Neanderthal DNA. That's the, the science behind it. It's not just a statement because Neanderthals were not in Africa. So... How the hell are they going to get? <laughs> so where, where are the genes going to come from? <laughs> so, yeah.